This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. As we've said before, if you want to know what supposedly objective reporters think, look at the advice they give to politicians. The Washington Post's Chris Saliza had some ideas for Barack Obama's State of the Union address on February 11th. The big one, Obama should spend the bulk of his time talking about the deficit. Saliza calls the debt the issue of the day. But is it? He cites a poll. When Pew asked people what should be the top priorities for the president, 72% said the deficit. But the same poll found more people naming strengthening the economy and doing something about jobs as more important. So it's unclear why debt reduction, which could make the job situation worse, should be the top priority. And why cite just that one poll? Saliza's own paper does polls of this kind all the time. Only the last time they did one, back in August, jobs and health care were at the top of people's minds. But elite media love to obsess over deficit reduction. Salissa also had advice on what Obama should avoid, what he called pet issues. These included gun violence and climate change. Saliza thought Obama should pick just one of those, guns, and leave climate to a passing reference. After all, it's just the fate of the planet. Obama's State of the Union call for raising the minimum wage to $9 an hour could be called a lot of things. A small step in the right direction, maybe, or a non-starter, depending. The New York Times called it something else on February 13th. Quote, it is sure to be politically divisive, especially given the weakness of the recovery and the continued high levels of joblessness. Let's see what divisive means here. We learn that opposition comes mainly from Republican politicians and corporate interests who say that raising the minimum wage burdens job creators. And the Times cites some research that seems to support that idea and some that doesn't. But are the American people divided? Not at all. An overwhelming 70% support the concept of paying people at the bottom of the wage scale more, according to one survey. We went through something similar during the health care debate. Single payer and the public option were presented as risky, and media cheered the pragmatism of politicians who worked against the wishes of the vast majority who supported them. In a saner media world, we'd be hearing about how risky and divisive it is for politicians to oppose policies like raising the minimum wage, a choice that would cause direct hardship for millions and that is not even popular in the abstract among the population. Finally, former Los Angeles police officer Christopher Dorner was himself killed after reportedly killing four people in what he claimed in an online statement was a campaign of retaliation for his own firing in 2008. For some, it was easy enough to see Dorner's actions as horrific, while still taking seriously his stated complaint that Despite reported reforms, the LAPD still engages in brutality, primarily against black and brown people. Not for most in the elite media, though. In a piece for Counterpunch, Lynn Washington notes the cues in a February 7th New York Times article that said, quote, Mr. Dorner laid out grievances against a police department that he said remained riddled with racism and corruption a reference to a chapter of the department's history that, in the view of many people, was swept aside long ago. While those many people can't include Los Angeles communities, their concerns over current police brutality have been so vocal that the LAPD organized a series of public meetings throughout the city just last fall to address them. Or even the reporters at the Los Angeles Times who broke the story of the Jump Out Boys, a clique within the LA Sheriff's Department that allegedly overtly celebrates brutality against people of color, including shootings. No context excuses Dorner's actions, naturally. But neither does it imply an endorsement of them to recognize that concerns about police brutality are not themselves delusional. I'm Janine Jackson. This is Fair TV.